Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It is a beautiful day today. The vents are opening up in the greenhouse. It's nice and warm in here. And today I'm going to be repotting my bird's nest spruce. Here is a look at my bird's nest spruce. So it's in a plastic pot and it's been in that pot for many, many, many years. And I've always dreamed of putting it into a nice pot someday. It's uh, growing really well. You can see the buds are swelling really nicely. So just a bit of green showing on the bud. So a perfect time to repot a spruce. And you can see surrounding my spruce here, I've got all kinds of pots that I've been trying out with the tree. So we'll go through all those pots and uh, in the end, I have to pick a pot to put this tree in. I mean, I could put it back in the same pot, but I don't think that pot does much for the tree. So here I go. It's repotting time for my bird's nest spruce. I checked the playlist for this tree. The last time I repotted this tree was in spring of 2017. So it's well overdue for repotting, that's for sure. Last spring I pruned this tree up, kind of really reducing the foliage on it. And you can see it's filled out again. And I can notice that this branch is starting to lift up. Very interesting. So today I'm going to be also pruning up the top of the tree. I'm going to run through the pots now. So I'm going to start with the largest pot. This is a pot that Sophie made. Um, so you can see it kind of... Uh, there. Definitely too big. It makes a tree look like a little tiny stick. So that's too big a pot. There's another pot of Sophie's here. The one, two, three, four, hexagonal one. So let me show you that one. So you can see that's a better size, but it's still too massive, too wide. It's just too much mass. I've got this freeform pot. Um, I think this one is too shallow and also too big. It's, you know, creates, it would create a whole landscape rather than kind of highlighting the tree. I think it would, you know, too much landscape would take away from the tree. The tree is interesting enough by itself. So I don't like that one with it. Um, I've got a round one here. So this one, I feel is too much pot. If it was this style, but smaller, I think it might look okay, but I think it's just too much pot for the tree. Now we're getting down to some smaller pots. So here's a glazed, glazed one. And you can see this size is actually looking better for the tree. It's um, a better size, that's for sure. I've got this one that's a sort of a terracotta pot and it, it's an okay size too it's maybe it's okay that size uh, I don't like the color with the tree you know the trunk is dark brown there's a bit of reddish on some of the scars but this is just too light I think with the tree then I've got a very small dark brown pot and I think this one looks pretty good it's a really nice pot with the tree however I'm worried that you know if I tried to reduce the root mass of this tree to fit it in this pot the tree would definitely suffer so I'm thinking maybe this pot this is sort of an intermediate pot this is another pot by Sophie I think the color is good, it's got good texture on it, and the size is good. You can see it's, it's shallow, this pot, it's not very deep, but it's a little narrower than the existing pot and a little shorter and lengthwise. So I think this is probably the best pot I have for it at this point in time anyway. So I'm thinking of putting it in this pot by Sophie. I think it would look 
really, really good. I'm going to start today by pruning up the tree. You can see all the new shoots and buds all over it so I can reduce this foliage back. I don't want this tree to get too top heavy with, you know, this big umbrella canopy on it. I want it to look like it's, you know, it's barely surviving in nature. I don't want a big luxurious green canopy on this tree. Here is a look at the tree from the current front view. So you can see that branch lifting up here. Uh, last year it used to be horizontal or slightly going down. Uh, that happens on spruce and pines. Uh, branches tend to lift up. Uh, it certainly filled out this tree too. Uh, it was quite sparse looking at the end of last spring. I'll show you a picture of it uh, after I pruned it last spring. So here it is now today, looking a little fuller and it's covered in buds. So there's lots of uh, choices for pruning today. One of the problem areas of this tree is right here at this junction in here. There is three branches coming from one spot. I have one out front, the one to the left hand side and one out the back. I would like to get that reduced down to maybe just the one branch in that spot, getting rid of the one out front and maybe the one out back. But I don't want to do that and sacrifice the look of the tree. So yeah, it, it's a, it's always been there on this tree that I have those three branches come, coming from one spot. Uh, last year I reduced this front branch quite a bit, but you can see it's grown in quite strongly once again. So let me have a look from the front view and see what I can do in this area. If I were to get rid of this front branch, I think the trunk line would be very empty looking. If I got rid of the back branch, I don't think that's affecting it as much. You know, I want to keep my branch, my windswept branch out this way. If that bra back branch were to go, I think, I think it would look okay. So it's possible today I could remove most of this front branch, maybe just keep a small portion of it. And on the back here, remove that whole back branch. This would be a, a big styling step if I go ahead and do that. I think I've got to do it eventually. Um, so here I go. I'm going to start by removing that back branch and I'll, I'll show you a close-up of that branch. Here is that back branch here. I'll just bend it down so you can see. You know, it's a fairly well-developed branch but it comes off the same point as that cascading branch. Now, I have the choice, I can cut it off flush or I can leave a stub and kind of create a, a bit of deadwood there. I'm going to leave it a little longer for starters and then I can come back if I don't like it and shorten it. So here I go. Here's a first major cut for today. I'm going to bring it back to the point where I don't have any branches, so I'll leave it quite long to here. So here I go. Big cut coming up. Done. Just like that. Now I still have a live branch here that I'm going to prune back. Take it off. That one's gone also. So that branch is killed off now. Let's have a look from the front. Here is a look at the tree from the front now. So that branch came from back here. So you can see it's opened it up a bit. I don't think it looks any worse without that branch. I think it's maybe improved it, lightening the canopy up a bit so it's not so like a big solid green mass up top. You can see the individual branches a bit more. Now I've got to deal with the one coming out front here. You know I could take this whole lower part off
like that, keeping just a small branch there. Or I could keep the lower part and get rid of the upper part if I want to see, you know, that branch junction in there. Well, I'll have to take a good look at the tree and then decide. I've made my decision on this branch, so I'm going to keep the lower part because it kind of hangs down. I'll prune off the upper part of the lower part of this branch. I'm going to remove the upper section and that kind of defines this branch out front and this one kind of uh, at different heights, slightly different heights anyway. I think this branch is too much in line with the other one. So let me do this now. Um, I'll come in, I'll take this upper portion off, and again, I'll leave a bit of a stub for deadwood. Here I go, big cut coming up, done. And then I've got to flatten this branch out, so I'll need to take off any vertical growth on it. So there's a shoot sticking straight up here, I can remove that. Like that. There's another one sticking up here, I can remove that one like that. There's this one sticking up. I'll get rid of that. And then I've got, these are kind of blowing with the wind towards the left hand side. I've got this part sticking into the wind. So generally on windblown trees, I shorten the part going into the wind so I can take it back to right to here. Taking the tip off. And then this one's kind of coming straight out front. I don't think I want that. So I think I need to either take it right off. There's a bud underneath it, so I will I'll take it right back, leaving a little bit of foliage on. So that bud will develop out front here. So that's definitely made that more compact. Let's have a look at the front view. Here is a look at the tree from the front view. So I think this branch, the one that's lifting up, is kind of spoiling the, the design. I'm going to flatten it out as much as I can with pruning and we'll have another look at it. So I'm just looking at the branches on it. Here's one going straight up. I'll take that back. Take that off. Uh, there's one going straight up here. I can remove that one. There's one kind of go lifting up here and there's some buds further back, so I'll prune this one back shorter, like that. Um, here I have a branch growing underneath these ones that are lifting up, so I'm going to develop that branch that's kind of angling downward. So I'll reduce this branch back to some buds here. There's a bud facing downwards on there, there's a downward facing bud on this one. So that kind of Give some light to that branch underneath here that I can develop. There's a bud facing downward here, so I can reduce this back. Same with this one, it can be reduced back. Um, I'm trying to see where I can take this one. I don't really have a good bud on it. I can take the tip off of the branch keeping a bud here and one here. There's a branch crossing the inside here. I'll remove that one totally. It crosses on top of the other branch. There's a branch growing from in here. I don't like it. It's growing from the inside of a curve. Kind of clutters up the flow lines of the branch. And here I've got one, two, three branches all kind of coming from the same spot. So I'll take this one that's crossing here off. And I'm going to take the thicker one off on the inside here, keeping my two here. And I can either take out, I've got three coming from one spot here. I can either take out the center one and keep my two, but then the Y shape is too spread apart. I want to keep it a little narrow, so I, I should keep the thicker one and this one on the inside and get rid of the one coming out the back. I think that would be the best choice. Or I could take out the inside one 
and kind of develop it out the back. Maybe I'll do that. That will give give me something growing out the back. I'll take away the inside one here. That gives a little more room between the branches here. So I think the structure of this branch is in good order. Reduce this one back. Some buds under here. Now let me have a look at it, see if it's still sweeping upwards too much. I think from the front it looks a lot better uh, and I have buds developing that will continue this branch more horizontally and I can prune these upward ones back eventually once those branches start growing. So, you know, I thought about do I have to tether it down? Um, I don't think I need to. And I'm worried, you know, I've got the trunk line on this angle and this branch. If I tether it down, it becomes parallel to the trunk line. And I'm not a fan of that. It kind of creates a, a square negative space in here. And it's something I've got to watch for on this tree. I, uh, I'm going to try raising the planting angle so this part of the trunk will be a little higher. And instead of this being so vertical, it'll be kind of kinked over a bit. I think that'll improve it. It'll also lower this branch a bit. So next, I'm, I'm going to look at this branch going into the wind here. It's getting quite long. I, I think I need to reduce it back. You know, maybe keeping a triangular shape here like that would look good. So let's have a look at that branch next. All right, here is that branch. Now I, I talked about there's one hanging down here that I wanted to develop last year before I cut the upper part off. And I think I'm at the point where I can cut the upper part off. So I'll leave, I'll leave some dead wood on it. So here I go with the live part coming off and the live part coming off. So now you can see the one angle down more. Now, does this dead wood contribute to the design? It makes this branch look longer and more horizontal rather than kind of, kind of coming down. I think in this case, I'm probably better to remove it. Yeah, I, I, I am. It just makes it too horizontal and long, that branch. So by removing it, I could shorten it up. Deadwood's good, but it has to have a purpose. Well, that comes off. That looks much better. It doesn't look so long and horizontal. Then I want to prune, you know, this is going into the wind, so I want to prune it back. So I'm going to take the end off right here, like that. Um, I've got a branch here growing above the lower one, so I'm going to remove that. I don't want branches on top of branches. I've got, this one comes off the trunk here and then I have another one in the same position. I think I can get rid of that one. So off it goes. And do I want, yeah, I think I want my more developed branch, do I? It, it's possible in this area I could keep the smaller branch up back, the finer one, and get rid of the thicker one. Even though this one has taper and movement, you know, as you go up in the apex, you want your finer branches. So let me think. I think I've got to keep the thicker one because it matches the thickness of this branch. The one behind it is thicker. If I have one skinny little branch here, I don't think it'll It'll look funny in the design. So I'm going to take the lighter one off in this case. So here I go. So that's gone. So that's really kind of simplified that branch, shortened it and got it kind of cascading a bit more. Now behind it, let's deal with this. Let's go around the back of the tree. I've got an, again, kind of a double branch coming from one spot off the trunk. So let me have a look at it. So here is that spot. You can see the branch here comes out to, into the wind and then I've got one here. I'll just take off this dead branch here. So that part of it's died off here. So I've got to look from the front and see 
if I can reduce it, this area to just one branch, it would be better for the structure of the tree. It always looks a bit funny, two branches growing from one spot, and you'll get a thickening in this area eventually. So I need to go up front and see which branch is more important, the one coming out the back here or the one coming into the wind. So here is a look at the tree. So this is the branch here. So if I got rid of that one, it sure changes the look of the tree. And the other branch is this one, which is going with the wind and is in a quite a nice spot actually. It does kind of compete with the other ones in this area. There's like these ones here and then this one is kind of in the same spot. I, I definitely don't think I need this one. I've got this branch here. I don't need another one kind of in the same area. So I can develop this one a little more. You know, I'll get some back budding and you know, keep it short, but keep it interesting maybe with more and more movement as it grows older in the future. So I, I definitely don't think I need the, this. So out of those two branches, I'm going to remove the one going into the wind. So here I go. All right, here I go. I'm going to take it off right to the trunk here. Big cut coming up. Here I go. Done. Here's a look at the tree now without that branch. I think it looks fine. So next I'm going to work on that back branch, kind of shortening it and keeping it cascading if I can. So let's do that branch next. All right, so I, I do have, part of this branch has died off. I'm just going to trim it back a bit, keeping a bit of dead wood there. And then on this branch, I've got, I'm going to prune off this long upward section here like that. And I've got a part sticking straight up here. I'll get rid of that. Keeping my more kind of weeping branches if I can. Take this upper part off here too. And I'll shorten this one to a bud. And that. Well, here I've got three branches from one spot. I think I'm going to take out my thick one up the middle. So here I go like that, keeping my thinner branches. Here's a look at the tree from the front. So it definitely, by shortening that back branch, it helps define this branch. It creates a bit of separation. I think it's a better look to the tree. Now I've got some work to do in the upper part here. It's a bit of a mess. I've got branches crisscrossing everywhere. So let me sort that out next. So again, I've got multiple branches coming out from one spot on the outside of this curve here. I've got one that kind of crisscrosses the trunk here. I've got a major branch up here, which is a bit long. I could definitely reduce that. Yeah, tough decisions here. There's so many branches coming from one spot. I've got three in this area. I've got the one out front, the one out to the left-hand side, and then the one kind of raised up. So which do I keep? Do I want to see the trunk line like that? I don't think so. I think I want something kind of in front. This branch out here is nice. It kind of, you know, keeps that triangular silhouette. And the one that raises up is also, you know, not a bad branch either. If I got rid of that, it would really make the apex look empty. <sighs> it's tough when you like all three branches in one area. Well, it's always tough making decisions like this. I think the one that's coming out to the left, if I rotate it around, you can see this back branch is on the same plane. So it's kind of, you 
it's kind of hiding that back branch. And I think if I take one off, that, I think that's the most unnecessary branch. If I take it off, it doesn't change the look of the tree at all. So that's where I'll start. I'll take that one off. So here I go. That one's gone. So hopefully you can see it didn't really change the look of the tree too much. Now if I get rid of this front one, it certainly does. Yeah, and you can see there's a bit of a swelling here already. It kind of reverse taper in this section. And that's because there was so many branches coming from one spot. Um, I do like the one out front. It kind of matches this branch. It's possible I could keep both. You know, this one is lower down and this one's higher up. So I could kind of keep that as more of an upright apex rather than a branch. So there's one hanging down here. I'll trim that off. It's kind of interfering with this branch. And it'll give a bit of separation between those branches. So I think it's better. Um, there's one here up here that can be shortened. I've got a bud back here and one here, so I'm going to shorten it right back to there. This one is kind of crossing the design. I'm going to take that off, shorten it. And then this one These two branches are kind of interfering with each other. I could take this one off. That gives them room. I think that's looking better. I've got this branch here that's crisscrossing my main trunk line. Right, and there's a bud in there, so I'm going to take it back to there. And then my trunk line, you can see it kind of zigzags and then it eventually ends off coming to the right hand side. That wasn't my original intention. I was going to keep it kind of pruning that and maybe making that my apex. Um, let me see what I like better. It's a tough decision. So I would be deciding I would take that right off which looks pretty good. I think it looks better shortening it. Yeah, I think it's getting too long. It kind of counterbalances this branch, but not in a good way. Yeah, I, I think I've got to shorten that and keep this as the apex now. Okay, let's do that. All right, so I'm taking this whole top off here. What a big change. I'm going to leave a bit of a stub. All right, big cut coming up. Here I go. Gone. Wow. That was a lot. It's really short in the tree, though. And I think that looks good. I'm wondering, I can shorten this trailing branch here. There's some buds tighter and I'll leave that one. I've got a lot of branches growing in this same spot here. Um, I've got to think of the future. Uh, I think this one can come off here. It's on the inside. So that's come off. And then I would like to reduce this one a bit. There's a bud back in here. It's not bad long, but... Hmm, let me think. I think this one's bothering me because it's almost the same height as my apex. I'm trying to see if there's any buds back further down. I'm going to take the top branch off here. I'll shorten it. There. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that's got the tree reduced quite a bit. It's possible I could even take off this apex and make it more windswept using this as the apex. I'm just trying to see what that would look like. It looks okay. Or I could continue this kind of as my windswept part. I think I'm going to leave the tree as it is. I think I've solved a lot of problems on the tree and I can let it grow this season. And then I can tackle the styling of the top again next year and just try and keep improving it. And But I think it's definitely improved it today. It's made it look sparser. There is a look at the tree now. Definitely a little more sparse up top. And I think it's going to look better. I did talk about changing the front slightly to here. And I think that's a slightly better front. I think it looks a little more interesting. Kind of shows the curves a bit more. Okay, so the next task is the repotting of this spruce tree.